I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is your complete guide to the 2024 New York International Auto Show. Let's check out everything on display. The New York Auto Show isn't as big as it once was, but the city and its annual gathering of car nerds still had plenty of excitement to offer. These days, the local car makers still make an effort, but it's actually the Koreans that pour substantial resources into this show. And that's where our story begins, Genesis. There's no missing this lavish stand thanks to a trio of Magma Orange high-performance models. The Magma program was confirmed in New York as Genesis's answer to M, AMG and Audi Sport. Every Genesis from now on will have a Magma variant. Three were ready to be shown. The G80 Magma is a production car, a hot V6 that will be sold in the Mideast only thanks to relaxed emissions regs there. But an electric G80 Magma will be shown next month in Beijing. Then there was the X Grand Berlinetta Vision, first shown earlier this year. It's a V6 hybrid with electric supercharger. Genesis continues to mull a production supercar. Finally, here's the GV60 Magma, almost ready for release. It's more luxurious than an Ionic 5N, but it's got similar mechanicals to that vehicle, and like the Hyundai, it has virtual sound, vibrations, and gear shifts. Next up, the striking Neolin concept. As big as a Maybach GLS at 5.25 meters in length, the Neolin hints at the future GV90 on the IMA platform. The real GV90 will take the concept's coach doors, which will mean premium pricing. Also on the Genesis stand was the recently revealed GV80 Coupe. Perhaps not quite as handsome as the wagon body version, the new body style also ushers in the option of a sportier interior with red seat belts and stitching. Time to step over to Hyundai's adjacent stand. Hyundai was a true co-anchor of this year's event and they bagged the first official reveal of the morning. That was for the facelifted Tucson, pretty subtle outside but a much more significant reshaping of the interior which reintroduces knobs and buttons and freshes up the tech. This one is an XRT, a slightly rugged version, likely on its way to Australia now that the XRT program has been confirmed for us. Matte paint is also now on the menu and N-Line versions continue to look smart. But sadly, Aussies continue to miss out on the Tucson's fun-loving baby pickup cousin, the Santa Cruz, which received a similar facelift. Hyundai says it doesn't want to blow its first impressions by bringing in a ute that's based on a car, but I kind of wish they would. I also checked out the Santa Fe XRT. Its knobbly tires and olive green paint were looking good. Like the Tucson XRT, this spec is rated as very likely for Australian sales in future. Then over to Kia, which had a large number of cars to show, though only a single higher spec GT line example of the vehicle that had actually debuted in New York this week. That was the new K4. While it's a direct replacement for today's Serato small car, badge the Forte in America, the length in K4 is really more like a mid-sizer now. The design will certainly challenge the pleasant interior upgrade and the surprise option of a hatch or really small wagon body style is a win. Next to the K4, Kia displayed an example of its recently updated K5 sedan. Here in America, more tantalizing forbidden fruit was on display, including multiple variations of the very well-received Telluride full-size SUV, as well as Kia of America's rugged version of the Sportage, the X-Pro. Plus, it was good to get time with the facelifted Carnival, which will drop in Australia very soon, while the brand works on a hybrid version. The adventuring continued over at Lexus, who had nothing truly new, but they did have a rad accessorized GX550 Overtrail, rocking a custom roof bar, ladder, and a bunch of cargo. Lexus also displayed a road-going GX550 on the show floor. If you're watching from outside America, here is the Lexus you might not have seen before, the large three-row TX. It shares some fundamentals with the Toyota Grand Highlander, also an America-only product. And this TX is the plug-in hybrid. To finish off for Lexus, have a bonus off-road going matte turquoise LX600 for some reason. Have a bonus 5 litre V8 powered IS500 in Smurf Blue with F-grade stacked tailpipes, but with no gear shifter. These remain vulnerable victims at motor shows. Then it was time to head next door to Mothership Toyota, which had an enormous stand. Nothing truly new for New York, but there was a feast of pickup trucks, including the new-ish Tacoma, which really blows our Hilux out of the water for desirability, particularly in this Trail Hunter specification on bronze wheels, also featuring a healthy amount of Aussie accessory know-how. The theme at Toyota this year was sports, and you can do sports in a Tundra or a Taco or probably even this ancient 4Runner, a much-loved vehicle in the US. 
This is almost certainly its last outing before the new generation debuts after 15 years on the market. Toyota also had a new Prado on display, just one, but this one is the iForce Max Turbo Petrol Electric Hybrid. Expect this to come to Australia in time to supplement our diesel. Despite the Camry's huge significance to Toyota, it was hidden over in a far corner. In fact, I almost missed it. Here's a Toyota hybrid we don't get. The Brits also weren't going to get it, but that decision was reversed. I guess Aussies don't care enough about it to kick up a stink. In America, Toyota sells hybrids of many kinds, including plug-in ones. And this port belongs to the RAV4 Prime, a PHEV many Aussies have asked for. But you guessed it, it's nowhere for us right now. Volkswagen is in a brand rebuilding phase in the United States, so in a way, it wasn't surprising to see them lay on a decently sized stand at New York. Here's something new, the crucial three row long wheelbase version of the ID Buzz electric van. Every Buzz I've reviewed so far has had five seats, slightly awkward when it seems like it should be a people mover. This longer specification fixes that problem and still looks really cool. The buzz was next to this pristine matching 1949 Beetle. Watch Volkswagen lean heavily into heritage over the next few years in attempt to rekindle the fuzzy feelings. In the next few months, Aussies will start seeing this, the ID4. This is in fact the facelifted version that our market is getting. It's just landed in the United States too. Evidently flown in from Deutschland was the new ID7 sedan, which will be sold in America, but not Australia for now, as Volkswagen sees the sedan market is pretty much unviable at this point. In fact, while the ID7 was shipped from Germany and there was a cool Euro spec Golf GTI complete with roof carried bicycle, the Volkswagen stand was littered with US domestic market oddities we don't see at home, including this Taos small SUV and the GTI-engined Jetta GLI sedan. However, judging by their noticeably down-market interiors when compared to the German stuff, perhaps we aren't missing much. Porsche, or should I say a local Porsche dealer, had a tiny stand, but scale didn't matter. This was my first opportunity to check out the new Macan Electric. And as it looks on the configurator, the new Macan is not as good looking a vehicle as the outgoing one. It seems to need a spoiler to lengthen its slightly eggy roofline. We do expect it will drive very well on the new PPE platform. An electric Porsche that we already know drives exceptionally well is the Taycan. And this is actually the just upgraded, slightly facelifted version. A bigger battery and hugely improved efficiency now means that it should achieve over 600 kilometers of range. Subaru has a homely, nature-loving sort of reputation in America, and their opulent stand concentrated on those strengths. Product-wise, it was all about the new Forester, which upgrades the existing car's platform and mechanicals and freshens the look a bit. Differences are subtle, especially inside, though we're told the forthcoming hybrid will be much more impressive than the rather mediocre outgoing one. Subaru's stand even had old Foresters, kinda old Foresters, and crashed Foresters, in a nod to the SUV's good safety record over here. The centerpiece was a display of Subaru's three current wilderness models that Aussies are clamoring for, the outgoing Forester, the current Crosstrek and current Outback all get lifted ground clearance, more capable tires and a rather garish paint job. Plus it was a chance for a quick look at some Subaru product that we don't get. The aging three row Ascent, a product that should clearly be sold in Australia and might be in next generation form, as well as the Liberty sedan that was retired from our market in new gen form for lack of demand. Anchoring the far end of New York's Javits Center was a pretty substantial Ford stand, with Ford's answer to the Porsche 911 GT3 as its centerpiece. The Mustang GTD isn't a diesel, it's a street legal 600 kilowatt, 5.2 liter supercharged V8 monster. At the electric end of the performance spectrum was this, the F-150 Lightning Switchgear, a hugely cool prototype that raptorizes the electric F-150 Lightning, Ford's revitalized Bronco, developed to a substantial extent in Australia on a right-hand drive platform, although not available to us for reasons, was on display. In fact, it was Broncos on Broncos on Broncos, all watched over by their pet bear. A model Ford should sell outside America is the Maverick, a small, relatively speaking, ute, that's actually based on the Focus and Escape car platform with good road manners. And speaking earlier of Raptors, well, that's not a Raptor, this is a Raptor. By contrast to Ford's chic dark stand, General Motors could seemingly only cough up a limited budget on brand stands that had a reasonable number of cars bathed in rather medicinal lighting. 
that made it especially easy to see the new Chevy Silverado EV displayed in hot RST trim to deliver nearly 750 kilometers of driving range and almost 400 kilometers tested towing range. We asked if it's coming to Australia. The answer is not now. In fact, Chevrolet displayed quite a few EVs, including the relatively compact Equinox SUV and the Blazer EV, which won an SUV of the year award over here in the US before the press cars unceremoniously started breaking down on journalists, according to American reports. Apparently, a fix has been rolled out. GM is keen to market the Blazer EV to police constabularies over here in the US complete with a rather hardcore perp seat, so hopefully those reliability issues are indeed fixed. In the electrified but not electric corner was the new Corvette E-Ray. Basically in the naughty corner of the Javits Center, far from the action, was a small GMC stand that hosted some really cool vehicles. This is my first time checking out the Hummer EV. This is the slightly smaller, slightly more reasonable SUV version. It sucks up more than 200 kilowatt hours to travel just 500 kilometers. It weighs an irresponsible 4,500 kilos. Its sport drive mode is called WTF, what's to freedom? But it's so cool and I can't help liking it. Sharing that 200 kilowatt hour battery pack with the Hummer and the Silverado is a slightly fancier GMC Sierra EV. It can drive nearly 30% further than the Hummer and it weighs about 700 kilos less. Finally, a product that is in fact confirmed to be coming to Australia. This is the GMC Yukon XL Denali. A little known fact about me is I went to school here in the US for a time and the Yukon was the family truckster, so I'm probably a bit biased. I think they look great, even if they aren't a match for the BMW X7 on interior quality. On to Nissan, another remarkably big stand, packed mainly with existing product, albeit with two major exceptions. One was the debut of the new generation Kicks, a cheap and as of now cheerful SUV the Americans can get. They don't get the Duke or the Qashqai, so this is their small one. Technically in the separate Infinity quarter was the brand new Y63 QX80. Yes, you heard me right, Y63. The QX80 is the luxury counterpart to the Patrol, so this new full drive gives us our best preview yet of the new Patrol, which will share the Infinity's proportions and twin turbo V6 petrol rather than a V8. Nissan also had America's recently facelifted version of the X-Trail, which they call Rogue. You can probably expect to see this fascia freshening on the Aussie version in time. Here's an Aria chilling out under fake cherry trees instead of promptly coming to our market while Nissan complains of Australian design rules being cumbersome to develop cars to match. And here's the oldest car on the Nissan stand. Actually, no, here's the oldest and probably the coolest. Polestar was enthusiastic about this year's New York show and even dispatched its global CEO. Of note is the new Polestar 4. It has no rear window. The Polestar 3 has had a long gestation, but it is still set to beat its Volvo EX90 cousin to market when it launches mid-year. Finally, to Honda. Like GM, Honda was consigned to the far terrain of the Javits Center under unappealing lighting. Here is the new Accord, which is inexplicably coming to Australia despite very, very limited sales of the outgoing version. It was only sold in very expensive high-spec form, which might have been the problem. For comparison, this base model costs 30,000 US. Honda is actually dead serious about the US market and America gets many great Honda and Acura products that we do not, including this pair the Pilot three-row SUV, and the Ridgeline car-based ute. Speaking of Acura, I'll round out my coverage with two of their recent releases. The Integra, a premium sportbackish cousin to the Honda Civic, this looks cool, and the new MDX A-Spec, a fully electric mid-size SUV that oddly takes its components from General Motors in a partnership that Honda already appears to be moving on from. Quaint. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the 2024 New York International Auto Show. Did you learn something? I absolutely love covering motor shows. They remind me of childhood for a start, but they're also a rare opportunity to sit in, sample, and even these days, drive a range of cars in one easy place. They are still a really fun day out. Well, that's all for today's video. Please leave me a comment below. If you like this one, hit subscribe and the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of our regular releases. And thanks for watching Chasing Cars.